I want to show you something neat. Really the simple stuff. We have an optical prism here. And I'm not going to enter the light beam. I'm going to get really close. And you can actually see how we have a red divergence that actually is arcing out like a corollis on uh, the divergent spectrum as it's gone through the prism from sunlight. Now I'm going to show you something else neat. And this has to do with the uh, spectrum capacitance of regular sunlight. I'm not actually going to touch the shadow, touch the light with the neodymium. This is a 2x2x1 two by two by inch neodymium iron boron block. I have covered with black tape so it's not reflective. I'm not going to touch the light, but you'll watch actually the shadow jump. See, I'm actually, it'll cover the red light normally as I get close, but if I inch just a little closer, the shadow will jump. So it'll proceed normally, and then it'll actually jump. And the reason for that is the higher capacitance is jumping towards the centrifugal uh, convergent center of uh, the neodymium on either pole, so to say, pole, of course. And I always call this the jumping shadow effect, but it has to do with the capacitance and the energy and EV volt of the blue end, blue end of a white light spectrum as opposed to the red end of white light spectrum. You see that Corollis effect right here. I'm not even actually in the light. I'm not in the uh, redirected prism light, but you get that Corollis effect. Right there. There's also another neat effect, but it's actually hard to show where one part, if I actually block part of the light, will appear. And that's the cyan. But you'll notice as I approach, approach the blue end of the spectrum, it'll actually fade before I actually reach it. You can actually see the same thing underneath the ferro cell, for that matter. So, talk about simplex experiments, the only thing you need is some sunlight, a precision optical prism, and a nice 2x2x1 two by two by inch neodymium N50 Gauss uh, uh, magnet by uh, spreading out white light spectrum. You can actually see the effects of magnetism upon the various spectra of the light, and an effect that I've always called the jumping shadow because that means that the shadow of eclipse towards the ultraviolet end of the spectrum actually precedes the actual occlusion itself and that has to do with EM phase shift. Everything in the universe operates off of capacitance, resistance, dielectric permittivity, and magnetic permeability. The capacitance and dielectric uh, permittivity is incredibly high towards the blue end of the spectrum and much lower towards the red end, so you actually have a shadow that precludes the actual jumping, uh, the actual occlusion. You have a shadow that precludes the actual occlusion itself. That's like someone projecting a shadow in front of themselves. You know, like a shadow, you're walking along, you have the same shadow, a shadow will actually jump. That's what's actually ha happening, the actual magnetism itself causes an occlusion before it actually reaches the point of physical occlusion. These principles and many others actually form the basis of electromagnetic retardation. That's actually technically what it's called. It's called EM retardation. Anyway, I thought I'd show that to you. Nobody else has done that experiment on YouTube. and. Uh, Simplicity is divinity. A lot of times you can actually demonstrate uh, the secrets of Mother Nature, you know, really, really simply. They don't have to be very difficult experiments with uh, very expensive gear. If you understand the nature of uh, those four things, and those four things only, resistance, capacitance, permeability, and permittivity, then you can predict pretty much the reaction of anything and everything in the universe. Uh, Mother Nature is a really, really, really simple gal. She's not all that complicated. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.